Around in about 3,000 years ago, an ancient Hebrew poet had an experience which he, we think, then wrote down into these words. <clears throat> Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of splendor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wondrous works to be remembered. Remembering is a huge part of what history is all about. Taking the past into today, learning its lessons, appreciating its beauty and its truth. Remembering is what our Christian faith is all about. According to 20th century French historian Marc Bloch, Christianity is a religion of historians. According to a high school teacher who gave me that quote, every Christian is therefore to some extent an historian. You and I are historians if we're on this faith journey to Christ. <clears throat> and the Bible, our book, is history. Real people in real time doing real things with a real God moving in and through all of it. The Bible tells the story of a God who made and moves through time. Theologian Gordon Spikeman wrote eloquently, time and history are creatures of God. His servants called into existence and continually upheld by his word. God made all that is, God holds all that is, and God mysteriously reveals himself through all that is and all that history looks at. God reveals through our physical natures and physical nature, through human nature, through the development of cultures and societies, God's Spirit is moving and breathing and saying something. In the Bible, from Adam and Eve through to Abraham and Moses, through the history of the people of Israel, through prophets and judges, through Jesus, God with us, and through the pouring out of the Spirit and the growth of the early Christian church, God speaks. We believe that this is a true account of salvation history and history that speaks. We believe, especially maybe in our community, given our bent, that all history speaks. Maybe not the same as biblical history. Maybe in a new way, a different way, maybe a slightly further away way. But we, we believe that God still holds the universe and everybody and mysteriously is working through them all. <clears throat> I asked a history teacher, same one that I just quoted from Calgary Christian School, what he loves about history, and he said this, I love the fact that all things hold together under the divine providence of God. The unfolding of all time, therefore, is part of God's plan. I love that despite my limitations at understanding this plan, I know it coheres. It holds together and is purposeful. I read that smiling and emailed right back and said, I love all those things too. Let them know that it is your hand, that you, Lord, have done it, that you do everything. Your life and my life and our collective lives are part of a story that God is writing, part of a huge history that God has spoken, is speaking, and will speak. If you want to understand who you are, and, and where you are, and what time it is, and where you're going, you need to enter into the reality of that truth. 
Historian Modris Eckstein's once wrote, Individuals and events achieve symbolic power not because of their own inherent features, but because they intersect with broader historical forces. The Bible, the Bible's Old Testament Esther, showed up for such a time as this. And Winston Churchill was a man for that hour. And you are here in this time of God's spoken history for this purpose. God is the broadest historical force imaginable. Our lives find power and meaning as they intersect with Him. And how it all works, how God moves through history, and how we can discern and engage the movements of God and all their mystery throughout history, see what He's doing. I'm not so sure that is so clear. I asked another history teacher to describe her aha moments in engaging history, and she wrote, I think the aha moment comes for me when I really dig into something and can put myself in that moment in time and feel what it would have been like to be there and experience what was going on. Experience history in terms of where it goes wrong. Those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it, one famous historian said, and to experience where it went right. Those who can remember the past are inspired to repeat it. Thank you. I was hoping somebody would get my joke there on the slide. But it works both ways, right? A lot of good things happen throughout history that can inspire us and inform us and shape us and do alongside all of the brokenness and the evil. The Bible's history and the rest of human history are filled with truth that we can apprehend primarily by remembering those truths, by taking them into ourselves through an understanding of them, by doing that through our imaginations, like that one high school teacher who can go back there and actually relive it. I mean, do you do this with the Bible story of Abraham or Moses or Joseph or Esther? We can re-engage truth in history through our capacities to reason, God put in you an ability to see through your rational faculties a rationality that is in behind everything that's happening. The resonance that a historian feels is a God-given gift to see truth in history. A truth that we can tell, maybe for the first time, and then retell and then be taught by. And all of that, for the historian and for you, a person of faith, requires a submission of sorts. The really good historians submit to the facts and don't read into history what they think happened. They listen with open hands and open heart and dig deeply for the truth and submit to it, to the broader historical force, in your case, to the force behind the broader historical force. So, as a person of faith, you need to, I need to, like a historian, work hard to maintain a submissive objectivity to reality in order to discern God's truth in history. We have to dig deep and be disciplined and actually read the Bible so that we have something through which to look at God in the world and take our faith seriously, use all of our capacities and gifts and senses, spend time, and don't just do that individually, but do that corporately 
like historians do throughout history. They work on each other's materials and they build on each other and history gets told. So too our faith. Only then will we experience the joy, the historian's joy of going, aha, I see. Put all these pieces together, I see what the story is and how it all fits. I can see reality and the grain of the universe, just a little glimpse of it, and I know how it fits. And in the seeing, I I, kind of know how I fit, and you know how you fit. We are meant to remember a story that brings deep joy, meaning, and change to the very interior of our lives. 